I wanted to just give you a quick preview of the kind of help that you can get in the Academy. Now in the Academy I've talked about um, the forehand, the offside forehand, and we've broken it down into five stages where we teach you right from beginner steps right through to where you're hitting the ball really well as well as the pros and what you should be doing to get to that point. Now <clears throat> I've had a video, two videos in fact, sent to me from some friends of mine that are in the academy and uh, Jo is having a problem on her near side forehand. Now I'm going to show you the videos but before I do let me explain what you're going to be watching because you will have heard me always, let me come up a little bit closer so you can see my hand more clearly. You will have heard me talk about the fact that your flexor tendon is the strong tendon of your wrist, okay? Because everything that you do that requires power or a grip uses this tendon and that's why it gets strong. Now your extensor tendon and the tendons on the side of your wrist the extensor tendon is just to let go, it doesn't build up strength and the others are just for mobility, you don't build up strength. The only strength you have is if you drop your wrist this way and engage this tendon. Now you will, rem if you are a part of the academy, guys pay attention and I hope all of you that are on the academy have really paid attention. Number one to the grip, secondly to the, um, the fact that you are engaging this tendon and I hope that you have gone through those stages lessons to really get a good idea of what you're meant to be doing. For you guys on the Polo Like a Pro page, you obviously won't have seen those lessons. So let me just quickly go through. If you drop your wrist this way and cock the wrist correctly like that and not carry it in this. You see, if you're carrying it straight like that, you are using all your weak tendons to carry it. The minute you drop your wrist, now you engage the strong tendon of your hand, of your wrist rather. And the mallet now is more vertical than when you're carrying it here. So it feels much lighter. And you will find that it's actually while you're playing, your wrist and your arm don't get so tired trying to carry the mallet falling down like this with the weak tendons of your wrist. Now, in your offside forehand, that wrist cock does not change. So at the back here, you would be using the strong tendon of your arm to make that mallet move. But the whole swing, everything that you are going to add to it, gets back to this position and that wrist lock as you're hitting the ball, okay? Because that's what imparts the energy and gets your mallet head quick. And it stops you pushing your hand and using only your hand to make the swing. But before I get into what she's done with her wrist, let me first talk about a body position that she's adopted because it's absolutely excellent. You will see that what she has done is she slid her butt through so that her left butt cheek is on top of the saddle, okay? And that counterbalances her top half going to the ball so that she's still balanced here now the other real positive that that has is remember that the mallet will always follow where your forearm is pointing. So if your forearm is here, if you're sitting in that forehand seat and you try and take your arm back, you see you can't get it back because your shoulders are square to the direction of travel. So now your forearm is pointing across, okay? And the mallet then will always go out and across your horse and you guys end up hitting these little neck shots that are meant to be straight forehands on the near side. And that's because of a seat, okay, that you're sitting square, that you can't get your hand back, your forearm is pointing to the right and that's where your mallet goes to. What Jo's done is she's made that shift, which is excellent, she's balanced, and that allows her to get her elbow pointing at the ball, all right, and her forearm parallel to the horse. So now the arc of the swing is great. Let me just come back a little bit to where you can see that. She's made that little shift which turns her hips, gets her shoulders more here, she can get her elbow to the ball and now that arc is perfect and that mallet coming through stays in the arc. But now comes where she is running into problems 
And it comes from what I've been talking about with the tendons of the wrist, okay? What she's doing is as she comes back, you will see she turns her wrist the wrong way. She actually hoods her wrist like this, and now she's using all the weak tendons of her hand. So when she comes back, you can see that shape, and the mallet head is vertical. I mean, sorry, is parallel to the ground, not vertical. You can see as I change my grip from my wrist from here, there's that. If I drop my wrist, my mallet now is vertical and comes through and pronates at the bottom. So the hassle is that if you do this, number one, if you want the ball to go straight, okay, let me come back a bit so that you can see that. If you've turned your wrist in, when you hit the ball like this, if you want it to go straight, you are going to push because you cannot use your wrist. You're pulling the mallet through. You're never flipping that wrist at the bottom, which is what gives you the power. Now to do that, you've got to have that wrist position that I'm talking about, okay? Because here I've engaged the strong tendons. My wrist is already cocked. That does not move. So as I come across, now the mallet head is vertical, comes down and pronates at the bottom of the swing so that through the bottom of the swing, my mallet is quick and my hand is slow. The other way, I'll always be pushing it. And if I push it this way and try and use my wrist, what happens is the actual mallet makes an unnatural um, shape to the head and the ball will go to the right. So if you're trying to use your wrist from there, you're going to cut the ball and you are going to injure your wrist. Where if you cock it correctly, you come back here, now that mallet coming down and you pronating your wrist correctly at the bottom, you will have the power through that way. So let's have a look at Joe and I'll show you exactly what we're talking about here. Enjoy and I hope it really helps you. Just take a look at that here with me hitting a near side forehand. You will see I've already made that slight seat adjustment. My left butt cheek is on the top of the saddle. I've got strong legs here. You can see my wrist is dropped. The mallet head is vertical. So as I make the turn, my elbow will be able to point at the ball, getting my shoulders parallel to the horse. Mallet coming down vertical there, pronating at the bottom, and able to go through, and the follow through going straight instead of across and underneath the horse. Here it is at normal speed, and you will see how easily that forehand happens because my forearm is parallel to the horse and my wrist is set correctly. So now let's take a look at Joe and have a look first at her body position. You can see her left butt cheek on top of the saddle. Her shoulders are parallel to the horse as is her forearm and because of that the swing plane is absolutely perfect. Straight down and straight through. So great body position. But now let's go back and have a look at her wrist. There you can see that unnatural bend in instead of dropping the wrist. And because of that, as she starts a swing, look there, it's accentuated even more. So you've got a very unnatural look to that wrist and she will always be pushing the ball like this. And because she's pushing it, she makes it go straight here. But if you try and use your wrist, you will see in the next clip that the ball goes immediately to the left hand side in a cut. Take a look in this clip. Again, you can see her changing her body position very nicely in the backswing, getting her shoulders and forearm parallel to the horse so that the arc of the swing is good. But now focus on her wrist and see what she's doing here. And you will see, as I described at the beginning, rolling her wrist under instead of dropping it. And because of that, she will be pulling the mallet through. There you can see the pull with the back of the palm facing forwards instead of the ed leading edge of the palm and as she tries to use her wrist and pronate there there goes the ball off to the left hand side in a cut as I said. So one more look at normal speed here you can see her turn but watch the wrist there it is and there's the cut.